Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to be doing an all-in pledge of Bard Song unboxing. We have a playmat. We've got some extra things here that were part of the stretch goals. We've got the core box, some extra dice. We've got our two extra boxes in the back. This is going to be super cool. This is my all-in Kickstarter pledge. Super excited to unbox all this and see what befalls us. I've heard some pretty cool reviews on this. This game sounds super amazing. I'm really excited to dig into it. Let's go ahead and start unboxing this huge gigantic dungeon crawling game if you're excited to see what's in all of these boxes then i need you to meet me at the table The first thing we have is the playmat. This is the playmat, it is really super cool. And on top of that, it is double-sided and both sides are pretty neat looking that you can use for this game. Check it out, there's the other side as well. I'm, I think this is pretty cool. This is where you're gonna be putting your, I believe it's fate tokens are gonna to be up over here and you're gonna be flipping these over and using them. This is where the initiative track is going to lie and I'm not really sure what's up here, but we'll see how this all goes. I don't know what this one, two, three, four is all about, but it looks super cool. But you can also play on this side where you're gonna be exploring through a dungeon. That's the deal, that's how this game is played. You're gonna be laying out mat tiles and you're gonna be exploring through a dungeon and trying to get out. This has a campaign system. I'm excited to dig into that one. So this is just just the playmat and that's only the beginning let's see what else we have we'll move on to the core box itself legends of the ancient forge this like i said is a campaign which is really super cool and sadly in transit my box got a little bit of damage here over on the side and of course the back of it <laughs> totally ripped open and destroyed i've already reached out to the company i'm hoping to get a replacement box we'll see if that comes to fruition if not not the end of the world as long as nothing inside it is not busted and broken i am totally okay with it we'll take off our lid and see what is inside. We start with this awesome cover page here of Bard Song. Inspire the song, live the legend, become Bard Song. And on the back there is a tile reference sheet. So it'll tell you when you pick up a tile, what exactly all the symbols are and where it looks like you can move off of tiles and things of that nature. This would be really handy to have to the side as you're playing through the game. Next we have our token sheet that has all of our punch boards in it. And oh wow, Wow, look at this. This is really cool. This is the insert. The insert is amazing. Each of these are going to be separate player boards. And let's take a look at these. I apologize for any glare that's on these. This is how our character cards are going to sit in here. Then we can put, I guess, our tokens in here as well. This is pretty neat. And you just cover it up. So if you're doing a campaign, you could probably keep all your stuff in this for all the characters you're playing with. And it comes with it comes with five of these trays. That's awesome. So we have five trays. These are going to be for all of those tokens you saw, which we'll get to shortly, that we can put right in here. I'm really excited when that Kickstarters and companies are starting to do inserts like this. They hold the things exactly where you want them and say them to go. Not to say that there's actually a lot of really good third party out there that are making some fantastic systems for storage, but I would, I'd rather have a box a little bit bigger and have the storage system that they wanted in here. Again, more place for tokens. And then we have some of our heroes here. Let's take a look at them. It comes with five different heroes. We have, now I don't know all the names of these characters yet, but as we start going through their cards, we'll, we'll see them in action and see who they are. There's one of them right there. So we have a, looks like a human person of some kind holding up his, the staff or a mace, I should say. Looks pretty awesome. We have a turtle type character here. Look at this, he's got a turtle showing. Go green machine. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Those are awesome. Here's some of the bad guys. Here's a, they all look like some types of minions. These actually all look about the same. They look like some type of goblin or something i'm sure we'll see how what all these are as we go so let's put these aside and see if we can find some of the cards and then come back to these miniatures and take a look oh my gosh there's even more miniatures down here look at these guys we're gonna take a look at all those guys in a few seconds we have some cards and we have some wings that apparently are going to go on something. Oh, they're going to go on this thing. Look at this thing. This thing is giant. Oh, my gosh. This is sweetness. Oh, wow. Let's put those wings on it and see what it really looks like. We can take these wings and stick them right into here. They're just going to slide right in. That's awesome. Let's get the other wing because this is going to look super sweet. Look at this thing. I can hardly wait to paint this thing up and put it on the table. Look at that thing. 
Oh my gosh, that is like your true demon lord. I might even use this in Dungeons and Dragons. Look at how awesome this thing looks. This thing's amazing. Look, it's even chained to the ground. That's pretty sort. It's got this chain it could break out of. That's awesome. It's already broke out of this chain for crying out loud. And it's even holding a torch. It's ready to throw some torches at us. Oh wow, this is a really cool sculpt. Really digging that guy for sure. We have our board. Of course, we're not going to need that because we have the player mat, so I'm going to put that aside. I'm not even going to show it to you because it's going to look exactly like the player board, I'm sure. Then it looks like we have our rule book, and we have the adventure book. Look at this adventure book. Absolutely huge. And I would like to say right now, if you're interested, this game is fully narrated by uh, Foreteller. Foreteller is an amazing app that allows you to listen to the narrative as you're setting the games up. So we'll be able to listen to whatever the original first campaign is in here, book, your chapter. So it would read all this, and you could listen to it while you're setting everything up. I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite things to do now. I use it for Madara all the time, because that way I can, as I'm setting the board up, I can just listen to what's going on. And here is the rule book. We're going to read through this so we can get this to the table. I have heard rumors the rule book isn't the greatest, but that's okay. I think we'll have no problem getting through it and putting this on the table. Before we go too much farther into the box, I do have all these punch boards we should talk about. We do have all of the different tiles for our dungeon that we're going to be going through that are double-sided here. Of course, we have all of our different tokens. We have, these are going to be all the different modifiers that we're going to, the, to add or subtract from any of the characters' roles that we're going to be doing. We also have uh, some experience tokens up here. These also may be double-sided, I'm sure. Yes, they are, one and three. And I'm guessing that the ones in the, these, I don't know if these are going to be double-sided. These might not because they're the same thing on both sides. Yeah, they're just going to be the same on both sides. That's kind of what I figured. We also have some door tokens up here that are going to be able to be shut and opened based on where you are inside the dungeon. We have some wound tokens here. This is... This means you're wounded. We'll put, we have one of those tokens here. That's the first punch board. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. They're all going to be very similar, just with a few differences when it comes to the actual tokens you have on here. Again, we have more stat modifiers. We have ghost tokens here. We have our grudge token. We also have these devotion tokens. So each one of these are probably going to be based on a certain character's abilities. Are going to be using these type of tokens. I'm pretty excited about that, that each character is probably going to be completely different. We have even more tokens here and more places to go. Oh, look at this place. That place looks pretty cool. We should maybe find this place in the dungeon. You might want to jump that thing. Be like something out of, <laughs> it looks like something out of, was it Zelda or something? We're going to jump over all these things. But over here we have, again, plus three to all of our stat tokens. We also have up in the corner here our third action. Most of the county must get two actions. This is a token showing you can have a third one. We have our Mirage token, which definitely looks like two different people in there. Again, we have, looks like busted walls is what this looks like, or broken walls or broken doors. And it looks like we have stairs going up and down or some type of thing. We have dead ends is what these are. These are dead ends. That's what these are. Huh? All right. Sounds good to me. That's it for that one. Let's move over to the last set of punch boards here, which is going to have a lot of different terrain pieces on it. If, give it as a big hole in the middle where this used to go, but this already just kind of came flying out. This looks like a super cool tile, and of course, like I said, they're double-sided, which is pretty neat. And the tokens we have on here are going to be different types of status ailments that we could potentially befall ourselves. We have Bane and Weaken tokens here. We have, I'm guessing those are fire tokens up there. Burn tokens. Now these are all going to be double sided because on the back there's going to be frost. So fire and frost. So, and these are probably going to be Bane and healing or something. We have, what's this one? This is going to be, oh, these are, those are both the same. Those are both bad for us if I remember right. Those are our Bane and Weaken tokens. And these are our poison and stun tokens. The other side of this token is a stunned token. That's neat that they can use both sides of these. Kind of, I would sometimes rather have one token that is for each one. We just write what it does on it, which is kind of cool. These are going to be all of our different fate tokens. The ones with these little bard song symbols on here. We do have money, all of the different types of money. Here's our gold right here. When one in five piece gold pieces here. Then we have, like I said, some of the terrain that was going to be affecting us. We have water and gas, again, double-sided. These are all double-sided. I'm just going to show you this side, then maybe I'll flip it over to the other side. Well, water and our gas token fell off. Totally fine. Not a big deal. And we have more of these all over here. We also have treasure chest. This is a stair token going up or down, I'm guessing. We have the mushroom patches, and we have lava pits, and we also have, it looks like probably some kind of stalagmites, or we have pillars or of some kind some type of cover that's what all these are now i'll flip this over as i'm losing pieces off of it it's such a big punch board 
And here's the backside of all of those tokens all doing again different things. Then we'll find out what all those are inside of each of the scenarios. The final punch board again has different, some of the same type of things. These are all gonna be different types of healing or charms, potential firewood. We have toolkit tokens. These are wounds. These are gonna be different, again, status ailments that are happening to us. We have bleeding and fatigue. We also have, it looks like, luck, blessings of some kind. And then up on the top, we have different type of possessed or corpses. We have switches and echoes and hidden passages all through here. We even have a camp token, a party mo marker token somewhere on the, that you're gonna be able to place on the map to signify where you guys are maybe while you're somewhere else in the dungeon or something. That thing fell off. I'm just gonna show you the backside of this thing to show you all the other types of of tokens that you can get that's it that's all but <laughs> that's it that's a lot of punch boards there's an absolute monstrous amount of punch boards which is pretty cool and i'm i'm, and I'm digging the fact they're double sided so not going to take up as much space but also on the flip side get it flip side flip side we uh also would have been kind of nice to have maybe them written down what they do on the other side on the bottom here again it looks like it has a bunch of different monsters which are really cool and maybe even some no i'm getting these are all monsters inside of that box i don't see why they wouldn't be we have everything from it looks like some type of gelatinous cube creature here that's pretty awesome i see now these i could use in dungeon dragons and i'm an awesome gelatinous cube we also have different types of mushroom type creatures here like a, he's here this thing looks amazing look at how cool that thing looks that thing these look awesome and of course all this stuff in here is made by game trays we have different arachnids i'm super afraid of spiders so that's amazing glad they always have spiders in these dungeon crawlers we have some of the bigger monsters over here and here's even some more hidden what is this thing oh a giant spider glad i picked that guy up <laughs> with a guy riding it. That's really neat. These are all really well done. I am super impressed by these. I'm super impressed by the fact this arrow is bent, but I can fix that with a little hot water, I'm sure. That goes in there. We have, what is this? Looks like a berserker type creature of some kind. He's right here, this berserker coming running at you. Look at the amount of detail on these. It'd be super fun to paint up. I can hardly wait. It'd be like a whole painting episode in itself. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh, it looks like, like a Demi Gorgon here or something with some super cool looking things coming out of it. It's a hooked horror or something. There we go. We'll put that guy back. What's this thing? Just another friend of the hooked horror maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Let's see if we put him back in there. Lots of cool looking things. We're not going to grab that. It's a bug. We'll leave red bugs right where they are. So those are some of the miniatures. I think you get the drift as to what those are. Since we were looking at those, those are some of the bigger miniatures. I didn't get a chance to show this tray off. This is again, a bunch of looks, I'm guessing more smaller minion type creatures. It looks like we have some King's Guards here. We have some, these guys are snipers with a little sniper action. We have, wow, what is this thing? This thing looks like some kind of shadow monster or something. That looks kind of cool. Let's check him out. Look at that, he's got like, oh, he's like, oh, that's really neat. How it looks like he's kind of coming out of himself. That's pretty neat. <laughs> I like it. So this is just a few of the monsters that you're gonna be seeing. What's this guy? This guy looks like he might be some kind of mini boss or something. Oh, look at that, his jaw's kind of off there a little bit. It's kind of laying, it's falling, falling off. Looks like a zombie type creature. That That's really cool. All right, we'll put these guys aside. And again, like I said, we have all of our heroes in here as well. They're making noise. I try to break this thing off here. Here we go, we got our heroes here and I mean, we actually know who these people are now. This is Dawn Guard right here. This is Dawn Guard. We have, I'm just gonna flip this over and show it up like this. This right here is Wild Shell. We have Night Feather, which is a rogue type character. We have Light Weaver, which is the one with the spear type creature. And then we have Stoneheart here, who's wielding these are double hammers? No, ham hammer and an ax. So you can't go wrong with a hammer and an ax. And a mohawk. Hammer, ax, and mohawk usually equals a good thing. It's usually a good day when you got a hammer, an ax, and a mohawk. This comes with a pretty much complete set of Dungeons & Dragons. Guys. you got two 20-siders, three 6-siders, a 12-sider, a 10-sider, a 4-sider, 8-sider. That's, that's absolutely perfect. That'd be exactly what I wanted to. And I have an upgrade pack as well that has more of the same. Looks like it's got a little bit of everything in here. One 12-sider. Oh, it has two 4-siders now. That's pretty cool. An 8-sider, the three 6-siders, and the double, double 20s as well. So we got double the dice. Can't go wrong with double the dice. Oh, the actual game itself does come with two 4-siders as well. I saw only one when I originally picked them up. Next, we have to get through as many of these cards as we can that I don't that aren't going to be spoiling any part of the campaign. I don't know how much this is going to be part of the campaign and how much I can just show off. We have a pack of cards here that says open this end first, which inside this it looks like we have 
These are going to be your initiative cards. We have one for Dawn Guard, Light Weaver. Oh my gosh, look at the amount of color and excitement these have on them. These are going to be super fun to paint as opposed to just drab browns and greens, which you normally see in these kind of games. Well, of course, for the row, we're going to take a little bit. But we have like Stone Guard. Look at that. I don't know if I'll be able to freehand all that cool looking stuff on her or him, but that'll be pretty sweet. Oh, the Wild Shell. That'll be awesome to paint as well. And then we got the Dawn Guard. So these are going to be your character cards. And these are going to be all the different stats you have. This, I believe, is a D6 you're going to roll after you actually hit. You can roll this to potentially do a critical wound. I believe this is your health, 5 health, 2 speed, and I'm guessing that is your armor. You get plus 1 or something and maybe plus 0 to attack. So the Light Weaver gets plus 2 to attack, but only in plus 0 to that to defense stat, which kind of makes sense. Each of them are going to have some type of ability here. If Light Weaver rolls a 1 on damage roll, replenish 1 fate. Well, that's pretty cool. Night Feather and Stoneheart and Wild Shell. So those are our characters. We do have the Brigand here. This is going to be, I believe, I'm guessing your first enemy you're going to fight. This is what happens when he hits. He's going to be doing one damage. He, you have to hit him on a nine two speed. Uh, he has, and then I have to look at what these other symbols mean. I'm sure this has to do with the type of enemy. It might get a power based on maybe in the scenario or something. This, I believe, is going to have to do with the AI card you're fighting or if you're using in the game. And this says right here, stop here if you're playing the combat tutorial. Good luck. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. It is neat that they do have a tutorial about how to fight and how to explore in this game before you even dive into Bardsong, which is really cool. There is a fantastic video made about this called Save Your Game. I'm going to make sure to link those videos in the description of here. How did, they, they did, I believe, the combat tutorial and the exploring exploration tutorial for Bardsong. Please go check check him out. They, he did a fantastic job. Again, the thing's called Save Your Game. The next set of cards we have are these boss cards. Again, don't want to show too much of this because I don't want to spoil too much of the game. But here is one of the boss type characters, a Reaver Captain. In this deck, you're going to find all the different bosses along with some of the powers that go along with them. You're going to find their attack cards and their initiative cards in here as well. And the initiative cards are probably going to tell you how they attack. And you notice there are, each one has some different things that are going to happen. as So it potentially could activate more than once in a turn or these could be just randomly placed out there as you fight we'll have to see as we play through it so for example here is our reaper reaper captain i'm just kind of showing that one hopefully it's not spoiling too much for you it has the ripping slash and it's going to if it hits it does these type of things where it could do a cull which is going to do a little bit different attack versus you or so there's all different types of attacks and different monsters and bosses that we're going to fight then in the back side over here are 18 different miscellaneous boss cards that are probably going to affect the type of attacks or affect the fight in general and each one of these is going to be a different one maybe i can find the one for our reaver captain here really cool quick. I probably can't. We'll just call it a day. Those are the boss cards. Next we have a bunch of just actual enemies. These are all going to, I'm not, this is again what you need to hit to hit them, which is the 11. These are all the different stats they have and there's a whole ton of these spiders, t brigand tamer. There's, and it looks like as you page through this, you're going to see some of these come up more than once. So it looks like I'm using a lot of the same miniatures, but for example, here we go. We've got a storm shade, a flux shade, we have a Gia shade and a charge shade. So this, they're going to be doing different things, but it'll be the same type of miniature. Again, I don't know too much about how each of these are going to work. And here we have the same type. Here's a shadow again. We have another type of br brigand here, an infected brigand. We have a so socking, was it stalking reaper? We have an ogres. We've got different types. Here's a giant spider. We have what ogres again. So again, we're going to be using the same types of miniatures, I think, over and over, but they're going to potentially have different stats that you have to deal with. On top of that, we do have wandering monsters in this as well, which I believe are these cards back here, which is a cool mechanic. If you keep too much of the dungeon unexplored and open, eventually some of these wandering monsters can come across your party, potentially even while you're probably fighting, which is really cool. I'm excited for that mechanic. The next set of cards, we have our second win card. We'll see what that one's all about. There's only one of those. But then we have all of these different dungeon tile cards. And each of these are going to have different exclamations as to what these are used for. And I'm sure as you're building up your deck for what you're going to be exploring in Bardsong, you're going to be grabbing the numbers that they tell you from the bottom of these cards. And those are the ones you're going to use inside of your dungeon. And I'm guessing you're going to randomly put those together and that is going to be your deck of cards. So each one of these, they might have the same tile, 
like this one, but it's going to be set up differently and have different uh, ways or you know, different things happening on the map is my guess. Of course, I could be completely wrong. Next, we have 138 of these aspect battle cards. Let's look at just one, for example, cornered. Their eyes feral, these foes are cornered and desperate and all the more dangerous for it. Enemies add plus two to their target number if they are the only enemy in their zone. So these are gonna affect the way battle takes place. Reinforcements, echoes in the distance, stalagmite formations. So this is gonna probably, you're gonna be drawing these as you're setting up a combat to see if there's anything extra that happens to you during the fight. Or of course the campaign itself may tell you to be placing these out to influence the way the fight changes for maybe the the better or the worse, depending on maybe what has happened to you in the past. Next, we have 214 of these aspect challenge cards. For example, there's a trapdoor. A trapdoor opens underfoot. The hero makes a TN12, target number 12 action roll. If they pass this card, this card, if you fail, and land you fall and land on a corpse and then you're going to suffer something you climb up jagged stone you have to make another type of save or you're going to potentially be hurt a trap door you can find a clockwork lever there's spider webs oh no there's magic fluxes trip wires so there's a whole bunch of different things that can happen there's a lost soul all these different things could happen to you as you're exploring the dungeon Next, we have this pack of cards. This one does say open this end first. Again, if you're doing the tutorial, you're going to start with this. It comes with a couple of the different abilities that all of the characters can have. Each one of these gets their own type of ability cards here that you're going to be using. It's going to tell you how you can use this and what you're going to be rolling, gaining bonus points for when rolling for it. Then down here, it shows you what you're going to do if you hit. And if you get a critical, it's going to do this. Also, it has a super power down here. And on this area here, if I get, I can spend two experience points to power it up, I flip it over and it becomes more powerful now. At least that's how I'm understanding it. So these are just some of the starting abilities for each of those characters that you saw. Then we have their starting equipment, which shows what they have here. The arcane focus and celestial bands are ravenous talent and crow's murder. So all these are found on the character card, your starting equipment. On top of that, you can kind of match up the colors that they have. And I'm guessing, nope, they don't power up. They just are the same on the other side. These are going to be your wound cards. So as you get wounded, you're just going to draw these cards and something bad's going to happen to you. These are some of the AI cards. Here's just a few of them in the back. There's four different ones in the back here that you can do. This is the ferocious one. If you remember that symbol that was on the bottom of our brigands card, it showed this symbol. This is the type of attacks and AI it's going to do as it goes through the game. Those are what's found in these small deck. Continuing on, we do have 78 of these different narrative cards that are going to, I believe, expand upon the narration of the game that's going on here. While this hero is in the same zone as Water Token, their attack rolls have the advantage. So it can be Aquamarine. We have like Bruiser's Respect. We have Possessed. We have a lot of different Possessed. We've got like a Dryad's Blessing. So these are different things we can gain or potentially happen or we can learn more about as we play through the game here. Updated Encounter Table. So this is going to change how some of the encounters happen. But of course, only if you have that card in play. A Thunderstone. You might be able to pick up a Thunderstone through the different narration that happens as we go through this adventure. We have more cards for our equipment. These, I believe, are going to be upgrades to what you had before. And then on top of that, they flip over again for even more upgrades. I'm guessing that's how this works. So you can power up the equipment you have. Instead of starting with the reg regular equipment, these things will eventually power up and you'll be able to gain some of these more powerful things. Here are some more AI that you're going to be able to control monsters, which is kind of cool. So they might, they might even, who knows, come with a couple of these at one point. Who knows? Then we have these. These are going to be our squire cards and I don't really know what these do. We'll have to look through the rules and figure out what they do. And of course we have more of these damage cards. These are just more damage cards you could draw as you're getting hurt. Here's the rest of our ability cards for our characters. Look at these tons of things we can learn. This is really cool. This really allows you to shape your character the way you want them to with all these different options. You can pick up different types of attacks. You can pick up different passive powers or even powers that are going to increase your abilities or help out your comrades. And every character has at least I think, 13 different cards. And so they're going to be playing completely different. And you could probably make your character fight a little bit different than somebody else who uses the same type of character. Oh, this is going to be really cool. I'm excited to dig into this and really start leveling up our guys and seeing what these powers can do. This will be really cool. 
Lastly, no dungeon is complete without a treasure deck. So we have a big treasure deck here. We could flip one over and take a look at one of the treasures here. Look, we found here, we found a sapphire cluster. I get to add plus two to my attack roll. That's fantastic. And there's a whole bunch of different treasures we can find throughout the dungeon as we play. On top of that, it looks like we can find these types of treasures as well. These are like actual ones you just read here. We've got like an elixir. The smell might be pungent, but the effects are undeniable. Replenish a healing potion. Oh, that'll be really good. I like healing potions a lot. That's it for the core box. Let's check out the next box. Next, we're going to take a look at Fables. I believe this is the Stretch Goals box. It's going to have all the things that were unlocked during the Kickstarter. We start with another adventure book on top. And I'm sure this is going to be another great adventure to go to Legend of Ancient Fables. The Fables expansion enhances Bard Song Legend of the Ancient Forge campaign with several new elements, including new heroes, enemies, bosses, counters, narrative lore, and standalone adventures written by a host of talented guest designers. That's awesome. This is going to be fantastic. Here is a set of rules for using this. Then we have narrative encounters. We have an adventure. We've got, what's this? Are these the adventures? This is the adventure section. There's going to be a whole section for adventures in here, just like the other book. And on top of that, at the end, there's even some encounters you could play if you just wanted to play some encounters, I believe. Or it's going to tell you eventually this is the encounter you're going to turn to and you're going to run that encounter. You could also, do not read this any further unless instructed to. These are all passages very similar to like a book of secrets that is going to happen to you. And that's about all there is. Here's some notes on it. This is awesome. I'm going to put this aside. We have our adventure book for fables. Let's take a look at what we get inside this box. First off, I see a ton of miniatures, and that looks awesome. There are some new heroes that were brought about through the stretch goals. Let's take a look at some of these characters here. There are a whole ton of them. And, okay, it is kind of taped there, so i got to make sure I get that right. Look at this guy. It looks like a centaur on this thing. This guy looks pretty amazing. This is Glade Strider here with all his glorious glaive and his hawk. That's kind of neat. We have a giant looking archer. This guy looks pretty sweet. This is going to be Path Seeker here. He's, look at that cape. That looks pretty awesome. I like the orange color. I'm gonna paint these, of course, but I like having the, there's such a big difference in what these characters are. We have two different huge brutes. We've got Forge Warden and we've got Skull Splitter. I'll let you take a guess as to which one you think Skull Splitter is. Ding, 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 you're right. It's this guy. <laughs> This guy's skull splitter, look at that axe. That's pretty amazing. They even put some decorative stuff on these capes. They're not just straight capes. Look, even down at the bottom on this cape, there's something that you can that is some kind of textured and cool looking graphic on there. What do we have here? Looks like a paladin type character. I don't know if it is. It's a demon blade is the name of this character. Probably good at killing demons, I would guess. I'm guessing this is a monk, some kind of martial artist of some kind. That guy looks pretty cool. Oh, there's a little partial to playing monks. They're kind of neat. This is Swift Claw is the name of it right there. And who do we have up here? This looks like Fire Soul. Maybe it's a wizard of some kind. Looks like she, I love how she's coming off of this thing. Looks like she's gliding in on fire. And lastly, would Bard Song wouldn't be complete without a bard, right? You need to have a bard. Why wouldn't you have a bard? Here's a bard right here. This is Fate Song. Huh. Easily, easily named. That is pretty cool. Then we have all these new enemies as well. Let's take a look at just a few of them. Of course, I'm reaching for the biggest ones because they're the coolest. Oh, look at that shield. Look at that shield. That thing looks amazing. Wow, this guy looks really awesome. He's got a ripped up cape and everything. Look at these. These guys look like huge giant iron golems or something. Oh, and they're giant orcs. Look at this. Orcs with huge armor. Remind me of my black orcs when I played Warhammer Fantasy. Look at this guy. This guy looks pretty cool too. He's in some giant Iron Man looking armor. That's amazing. What is this? Oh, look at this undead looking creature. This guy looks awesome. He looks like he must have some kind of most like, looks like he has candles on his blade or something. I'll have to take a look at that and see what that really is because that looks pretty sweet. All right, those are some of the miniatures here. Let's dig into the next part of the box here. It looks like we have even more miniatures and we have all our cards, so let's take this out. I'm sure it's taped together, so we gotta get the tape off. Now that we got the cover off of it, we have a neat new commemorative coin. I can flip it 
heads I win, tails I win, right? And then I always win. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. It's got a Bard Song logo and a skull. That's pretty sweet. We'll look through all these cards. Though I'm sure they'll be very similar to the core box cards with some monsters, some of our heroes, and even some other narrative events and things of that nature. I'll put these to the side. We've got, oh, look at these awesome minis. We've got even more cool minis. Look at this one. we got a whole wolf pack, an entire pack on one disc. That's pretty cool. We've got another Berserker here. We've got, what's this thing? Oh, this is an Oni. I fought some of those in Shadows of Brimstone. They set a huge giant sword there too. That's pretty awesome. We've got like a Grell. Here's a Grell. Look at this thing with a big giant brain on him. That's pretty awesome. We got a, this looks like Starro. It's Starro. No, it's not Starro. It's like a cloaker, a cloaker character. I could even use this in Dungeons and Dragons. That'd be pretty sweet. We got some kind of ooze type creature here. Pretty awesome. Wow, these are all really cool. Look at this guy. He's carrying a huge giant pole here. It's a cave shark, hence, look at this thing. It's a shark, that's pretty awesome, a cave shark. I mean, mm, it's giving me some ideas for, what am I doing Dungeons and Dragons now? Cave shark, that's pretty awesome. All right, those are some of the miniatures. Let's take a look at some of these cards. Our first pack of cards is a lot of our enemies. Here's that wolf pack. Look at that, that looks really cool. Oh, it makes me wanna, as I paint these up, to put those red eyes, those look really neat. Goblin thief, we've got a predator. We've got that ooze type creature there. The Basilisk, that can't be good. It turned into a stone, probably. We've got the Blitzer. There's that Cloaker creature we saw right there. That looks really awesome. So here's all the different enemies from the miniatures we saw out there. Also, there's going to be some mini-bosses in here as well. As we go down this thing, we fight some of these mini-bosses back here. Let's see if we can find any of them. I bet this guy's a mini-boss. Run right back here. Nope, not found any yet. <laughs> there's got to be some in here. Here's one of them. The Cave Shark is a mini-boss. Why not? This big swig is probably a mini boss. Yes, he is. You've got two different sides. It usually means it's a type of mini boss. Then there are some bosses in here as well. There are five different bosses inside this just small expansion here. So those are their first set of cards. The next thing we have are those narrative cards again. We have all these different narrative cards that are going to affect the game as we play it different things that we're able to pick up or have to deal with as we play through it. Then we have our different character cards. Here's like Skull Splitter's, Splitter's initiative card. There is Glade Strider's initiative card. Look at Fire Soul. That looks absolutely awesome. Riding in on this fire. So cool. Forge Warden. We have Fate Song. We have Swift Claw. These are super, I love how colorful each of these characters are. These are so neat. Pathfinder Demon Blade. There's a hex. I don't know what that is. Who is this? One of the characters, I guess. Cornelius. These are different dogs or animals of some kind. Maybe somebody can summon pets. That's kind of interesting. Then we have our actual character cards that they get to use. The demon blade. Oh, that looks pretty sweet. There's fire soul again. I'm sure they've got some kind of fire magic. I wouldn't see why they wouldn't. But these are all the different types of player characters. You can be the dogs. All right, well, I guess these are player characters as well. Then we have some of these. These are all going to be, I believe, like our challenges or aspect challenges or things of that nature that are going to take place inside the dungeon. These are all, again, different types of narrative things that we're going to take place. And they continue on over onto the next pack as well. More narrative encounter cards. There are aspect battle cards. There's aspect challenge cards. There's treasure cards in here. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. We can update that encounter table yet again. The next thing we have is this huge stack of small cards. We have some treasure cards here. We have all the different powers that these characters have. Let's see what some of these characters start with and we can see what how cool these characters can be. The first character I'm just gonna look at really quick is you'll never guess, Fire Soul. Let's see, Fire Soul, one Fire Soul. Oh, it doesn't say what she starts with. It says on this card. Oh, here, I bet on the back. Here we go. Starting abilities, Ember and Fireball and Flame Wall. That's, that's, uh, that's a no-brainer right there. I could have probably guessed that one. And I'm sure they're going to be the first three cards here. Flame Wall, Ember, and Fireball. Yep, so she starts all three of these cards. This one I'm guessing is going to give her some kind of buff. And then these are going to be some types of damaging type spells. So, for example, if this one hits, it's going to do one damage. It criticals, does two damage. It misses, it probably puts like a fire token down somewhere. We'll have to see how that all plays out, potentially, if we decide to use that character. These are all the different ones from all the different characters that we get to play with. We have Hip Toss. Oh, I bet that's the Monk. I bet the Monk gets Hip Toss, Zen Mastery, and this Disarm attack card. That's pretty cool. This is going to be, who's this? This is Warming Up, Wild Swipe, and Frenzy. I'm going to guess that Skull Splitters card. Oh, and they do match the back of the color of the card. That makes total sense. Oh, wow. They thought of everything. 
and we've got the blue ones here's uh wow look at all these there's so many different characters in here and then these are gonna be their starting equipment and i'm guessing the upgrades to all those equipment as well as we play through the game i mean here's oh my gosh this soul that soul care reaver character gets like i'm guessing a soul blade of some kind and just going to keep powering up now oh, on a demon spirit oh that makes sense totally there's a demon spirit with it too that's so cool that's the end of the fables box we'll move on to our next box the next box is our lost levels box this is i believe just a narrative expansion it has an adventure book for the lost levels it is really just an adventure book i believe the lost levels it says here expansion enhances your bard song the campaign with several new elements including new enemies bosses encounters and narrative lore each representing this unique and mysterious location within the ancient forge so this is going to be i believe yep chapter one this is going to or chapter selection i'm sorry these chapters follow chapter oh these are going to be a continuation of it i believe so this is going to be a continuation of it after you complete the actual game i bet you move into this thing oh my gosh look at some of these guys i'm already looking at that big guy right in the middle there we're gonna take this piece of tape off and we're coming right at that guy that's for sure <laughs> he looks super cool look at this guy oh that's pretty sweet he's a huge giant machined up creature look at this awesome looking shield on that that's an amazing shield that this guy has super cool wow those are super cool now if you notice there's no more heroes in this one but that's okay love that weapon he's got that is so neat these are really cool i'm probably not going to go through a lot of these cards they've all been similar from the other ones you're going to see just the different type of monsters you're going to see the boss cards in there you're going to see i'm sure different always oh, different types of wounds in this one but you're also going to find treasures and also the ai deck that these characters probably have are in here and then it looks like i wouldn't doubt if this is the big boss guy down here this one right here this guy this is probably the boss i'm sure it is look at this guy well i'm sure that's probably a boss too I mean, this guy's not the boss i don't know who is them these guys look awesome wow those are this box has some really cool looking miniatures in it i'm pretty excited i'm like i said not going to open all these card packs i'm guessing you get the idea of how those work let's check out the next boxes the rest of the box i have are going to be the ones that were part of just i believe add-on packs of some kind so we have the distant depths i believe these are all a lot of different terrain that you can be able to use in the game and i think that's all that you're going to see in these but let's take a look at a few of the pieces here i bet they're going to be really neat of course they are taped together because why not that'll make me really happy and let's see what some of the stuff we have is we've got super looking cool doors here we've what is this thing it looks like a whole like kiln section here again this is amazing terrain that can be used in all different types of games there's a stalagmites there's stalactites we have those uh, what do you call them those the switches here these switches look really cool we've got some these are the dead ends that we saw in, as tokens. Now we can have them as actual minis. That's sweet. We have a lot of different oozes and piles of yuck and guck. And we even have a big giant pillar here in the middle that's holding up something. Who knows? Who knows what's holding up? It's covered with treasure. We like treasure. Treasure, treasure, treasure. I like treasure. So we'll put those back and put this down. That's just one of the boxes. We have another one here called the upper levels. Those are the lower levels. I'm guessing the upper levels doesn't have sewers and stuff like that. We've got a, oh my gosh, look at this. We've got a lot more of these switches on top of that. We have, look at these staircases. Oh wow, this staircase is awesome. Look at that thing. That's pretty neat. And we have some cool looking doors, some with ruins on them. I'm going to paint these up different colored ruins. That's going to be awesome. Look at that door with on the back just plain ordinary door, but the front of it has those neat looking ruins on them. Then we have some, again, boxes and barrels of some kind. We have a whole thing with sewer coming out of it. We have a whole sewer entrance here. And you can use this in so many different things other than just bard song. I mean, a sewer entrance, everybody needs like a sewer entrance in their game, right? And what do we have here? We have, it looks like another like broken column of some kind. So that's the upper levels. We have looked at the upper levels. We looked at the lower levels. Now we have some hobgoblins. And after we see the hobgoblins, we have, I believe the last one is just doors. Doors, lots of doors. Can you believe that? We got a whole box just filled with doors. So let's take a look at the doors one really first because that's not gonna be, that, that'll be just probably opening the box and showing you what's in it. We've got, yep, doors. I don't need to go too much into it. They're all probably exactly the same. They look like that. They all glare like crazy, super, super good. And then we got our hobgoblins here. Well, I'm sure those might actually be miniatures. Not sure, let's take a look and see what's inside this box. Yep, these are all different types of hobgoblins. I wonder if they're going to have cards for them in here. Nope, so I'm guessing the cards are somewhere else. 
but we have more of these minis. I'm not going to, again, hold them, take this apart. We've seen all these minis in some of the other boxes we've already opened. But again, more minis, more fun, right? That's the rules. More minis, more fun. You can't go wrong. So that's it. That is Bard Song. We have done a complete unboxing of an entire all-in pledge, including the playmat and some extra dice. Absolutely fantastic. This is one of my long-awaited games that I've been super excited to put on the channel. So we're going to be busting through this rule book right here, learning the game, and you're going to see some fantastic playthroughs coming soon. I can hardly wait to get this one to the table. And if you enjoyed this unboxing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when this playthrough comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone and on top of that in the description of this video i have placed my patreon you can check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel that's fantastic some of the things we're able to do in that patreon is you're able to help me decide who is going to be the characters we play in bard song so check out the patreon and help decide who is going to be the characters that we're going to take on our huge adventure of through bard song the legend of the ancient forge oh, this is gonna be super super fun that's it thank you so much for watching and if you're excited to see bard song and anything else on this channel then I need you to meet me at the table.